This is the Microsoft Word References tab and ribbon in depth. In this video, we will explore the entire References tab and ribbon. By the end of the video, you'll know this material inside and out. This is going to be fun. Let's get started. And this video is one in a series of videos in which we look at each of the tabs and the corresponding ribbons in Word. The References tab and ribbon is one that gets overlooked very easily by Word users. But it's very powerful and it can help us to create important things like citations, bibliographies, tables of contents, and more. Let's start with the Table of Contents group. And here at the left, we have a Table of Contents button. If I click on that, you can see that there are different automatic Table of Contents options that I could choose from. There's a manual Table of Contents. But one of the tricks to creating a good Table of Contents is before clicking here and making any decisions, you should go to your document itself and select one by one each of the key sections of your document. So this first section is the introduction. I clicked and dragged to highlight the word introduction and then I'm going to go to the home tab and in the styles group I'm going to mark this as being a heading and there are different styles for headings. I could go with this a little bit bigger text and a blue color or I could just go with this kind of gray color smaller text. I think I'll go with Heading 2. Now I'll click and drag to highlight the second important section of my document and I'll select Heading 2. Now the third, Heading 2. So you get the pattern here, of course. Just select each section title one by one and set it to be Heading 1, 2, 3, or 4, whatever you prefer. Now it's best if I do this as I'm creating the document. But give me a minute to finish marking each of these section titles as headings and I'll resume the video. Okay, now that I have each section title set to be a heading, I can create a space for my table of contents and then generate it. And I think I'll start by going to the Insert tab and clicking Cover Page. I just want a pretty simple cover page maybe this one here, and I can double click on that and give it a title and a subtitle perhaps. And I'm just gonna delete this other detail that has appeared. And then I'll go back to the insert tab and click blank page. So now I have a blank page after my title page. And this is where I would like the table of contents to appear. Going back to the references tab, I'll click table of contents. And I tend to like this automatic table two but whatever you prefer is great. I'll select table two and look what happens. The table of contents is added. What happened here is Microsoft Word just looked throughout my document for any headings and then treated them as important pages to include in the table of contents. Now what happens if I continue to develop this document maybe by adding a few more paragraphs and the document gets bigger and what if it pushes the conclusion onto a new page. If I go back up to my table of contents, look what you see. The page numbers have not updated. It still shows the conclusion as being on page four. So what I can do is go here to the table of contents group and click update table. Do I want to update the entire table or just the numbers? I'll just do the numbers. I click OK. And the page number for the conclusion has updated to six. Now, if you click on the table itself, notice that there is an update table button there as well that you can use to update the information. Now, if I need to make some adjustments to the table of contents, I have an add text button to help me do so. So for example, I'm gonna browse down to an area in my spreadsheet where I added additional paragraphs, maybe right here. So I click and drag to highlight that paragraph and I'll go to the References tab, Table of Contents group and click Add Text. I want this to be a level one in my Table of Contents. So I click there and now going back to my Table of Contents, I can then click on it and click Update Table. This time I want to update the entire table. I click OK and the paragraph that I highlighted has now become part of the Table of Contents and it's got a page number for if you want to read more. So I wanted you to see this example. Yes, this is possible to do, but it would have been better for me if I had just clicked and dragged to get a small part of this paragraph, not the entire paragraph. Whatever you select and click add text and then update the table of contents, 
it will be added to your table. Okay, let's move on to the footnotes group on the references tab. I'm going to browse down a ways, and let's say that right here I would like to add a footnote for people to learn more about the characteristics of new wave music. I can just go here and click insert footnote. Instantly I get a number one superscript, so it's a little bit above where it normally would be. And I also get a number one down here in the footnote area and a flashing cursor. So I can type a message here, something like, like this. Now, if you prefer, instead of adding a footnote, you can use end notes. So I'll insert an end note, something like this. Looks like my text is hidden by this image, so I click and drag to move it to the side. So let's go back up and you'll notice the difference between a footnote, in this case with a number one, and an end note, in this case with a letter I, a lowercase i. Also in the footnotes group, we have the next footnote button. This is for if you want to jump from one footnote to the next, or you can go back to a previous footnote and it will automatically take you there. You can also choose to go to the next end note or previous end note. Finally, we have a button to show notes. In this case, I want to see the end note area. I click OK and it jumps me down to the end notes. Notice that we do have a launch button here, or sometimes called a dialog box launcher button. If I click on that, it gives me even more footnote and end note options, including which number format you want to use, the footnote layout, the numbering system, do I want it to be continuous or restart in each section? There are lots of great options here. If I change any of these, I need to click apply to make them actually happen. I'm going to cancel out of that and move on to the citations and bibliography group. As I'm developing this document, if I cite another author or a concept, I can just highlight the text in question and click insert citation, add new source. If you don't quite have the source yet, you can add a placeholder instead. I'll just click add source. I can put in the source type. In this case, it's going to be a website. The author is unknown. I can put in the name of the web page and paste in the URL. In this case, it's also the name of the website. I can click OK and the citation is added here and it has a drop down button that gives me other options. One of those options is to convert this citation to static text so that there's no drop down arrow, it's just text on the page. Now let's look. Next to the insert citation button, we do have a bibliography button. And there are various styles and options for the bibliography. In this case, I'm going to browse down to the very bottom of my document. I'll click and I'm going to tap enter to get onto the next page. And then I'll click bibliography, insert bibliography. So now I have a citation up here. And down below, I have a corresponding reference in my bibliography. Above the bibliography button, I have a style button that I can use to change the bibliography style for this document. Right now it's set to APA style, but if I switch it to Chicago, you can see the result. If I switch it to MLA, it changes yet again. We also have a manage sources button that I can click and this tool, the manage sources tool, is mostly useful once you have a lot of citations in your bibliography. This can help you to make sure that they're in the right order, that the information here is correct, and you can edit any of it. You can delete, copy paste, or even create new citations right here in the source manager. I'm going to X out of that. We also have a change provider button. I wouldn't change this much. I would just use the default provider. But if you need to, you can click here to choose a specific other provider for your citations and bibliography. Next, let's move to the captions group. Let's say in my document, I want to have a picture here maybe at this point in my document. So I click, I'm going to tap enter a couple of times maybe, and then I will use the insert tab, pictures, this device to find an image that's on my computer to then insert it into my document. This is great. But I can click on the document and go to the references tab. In the captions group, I can click insert caption. So I'm typing in a caption to go with this image. I want to label the figure below the selected item, click OK, and now my image has a caption. Now you're not limited just to captioning images. You can caption other things as well, like graphics, shapes, 
like this smiley face. With it selected, I can go to the References tab, Insert Caption, and I can caption this shape. We also have the ability to insert a table of figures. And this is kind of like a table of contents, but for images, graphics, shapes, other things that you've added into your document. You can just click OK, and it creates, like I said, a, basically a table of contents for your figures that you've added to your document. You can even caption text. So I've clicked and dragged to highlight this paragraph. Let's insert a caption there. I'll just call this key paragraph, click OK, and the text now has a caption, so that's kind of cool. Another thing we can do, similar to citations and footnotes, is we can do some cross-referencing. So for example, I want to cross-reference this paragraph with this paragraph. Let's say they have something in common. I can click and drag to highlight the paragraph. On the References ribbon in the Captions group, I can click on Cross-Reference, and I want to reference maybe a heading, and it's this heading here. Insert, close, and by doing so, it has changed my text here in my section title. That may or may not be what I want to do, but I want you to see that that is a way to connect one paragraph to another by cross-referencing. Next, we move to the index group, and this is similar in some ways to citations and bibliography and perhaps footnotes. The way it works is you can build an index of key words and the page numbers that they appear on. So for example, I want to mark the phrase new wave as an important keyword in this document. I highlight it and I click mark entry. I'll click mark all and close. Now, if you look closely in my document, there's all of this markup information here where it's got some interesting formatting and it says new wave in quotation marks. Just know that that just means that it's become part of my index. And if I switch modes down here in the lower right from print mode to, let's say, read mode, all of that markup information goes away and it's easier to read. So I'm going to go back to the print mode. And now that I've added this term of new wave into the index, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my document and maybe I'll just put it right here. I can now click Insert Index. There's some options I can choose from for my index, and I'll just click OK. And now you can see it's built an index. Now it only has one term. It has New Wave. That's it. But it shows that term is on the title page and pages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's basically every page because that's what this document is about. Now I can add another term into the index, maybe Synthesizers. So I click and drag to highlight Synthesizers. I'll mark that entry, mark all, close, and I'm going to get rid of the index that I had already inserted, and now I'll insert a new index, click OK, and you can see that Synthesizers has been added to the index with the corresponding pages where you'll find information about Synthesizers. So this is a great user-friendly way to build an index into your Word documents. Finally, we have the Table of Authorities group, and this one is very specific to the legal profession. Lawyers and paralegals, judges perhaps, might make use of this. It's just a way to, to create a reference list that catalogs all the legal citations, cases, statutes, things like that used in a document. And it has the page numbers where they appear. So very similar in some ways to an index, but for the legal profession. So I could highlight an area, mark a citation. There are several different options I have, including a long citation. And then I can just click Mark, Close, and kind of similar to what I did with the index, just go to where you want the Table of Authorities to appear, click Insert, Table of Authorities, there are options to choose from, click OK, and it's added. So in this video, we have looked at each of the different groups and options that you'll find on the ribbon when you click the Microsoft Word References tab. Each of these groups is kind of similar in some ways to the others. We have Table of Contents, which is similar to Index and similar to Table of Authorities. All of those are kind of similar in some ways. Even Table of Figures is pretty similar. And then we have footnotes and citations and bibliography and captions that have some things in common. So anytime you want to do any of those kinds of references in your Word documents, the References tab is where you want to go. And this video that you've just watched is what you want to reference if you forget how to use any of these options.
Now this video is one in a series that I have produced on the Microsoft Word tabs and ribbons. Make sure you go back and watch all of my other videos on the Word tabs and ribbons. Once you've mastered each of the tabs and you've watched my Microsoft Word for Beginners, the complete course video, you are ready to use Microsoft Word at a high level. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member, but you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.